Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Short Rounds Roundtable. I am your host, Short Round. Today, we're at a not as well known battlefield. It's not nearly as big as Shiloh or Gettysburg. It's not riddled with monuments, but there is a story to be told for this little piece of ground that did play a pivotal role in the American Civil War. Today, I'm at the Davis Bridge Battlefield, also known as Hatchie Bridge. And let me set the stage for you about this battle. October 4th, 1862. You see that tree line right there? Well, that same tree line has the Hatchie River in it. That bend right there in the very center is just about where the bridge used to be. That was the only point to get across that river for several miles where it was safe to cross on October 4th, 1862. Also happening on October 4th, 1862, Corinth is falling. It's been under siege and Confederate soldiers are starting to withdraw from Corinth and, and Federals are starting to take possession. Well, in that retreat, Earl Van Dorn and Sterling Price are just right across that river by a few miles, not very far. They have no idea that both General Hurlbert and his division would be coming from Bolivar and General Ord and his men would be coming from over towards Grand Junction and northern uh, Mississippi. But they would all converge and come here just outside of Pocahontas, Tennessee, on this side of the river. There would be several regiments scattered here and there and abroad as Vanguard and Pickett. Actually, on October 5th, the same morning as Davis Bridge, Confederates were pushed from Middleton all the way down State Line Road, which is actually right here behind me. Well, behind you and the camera. But this is the old route for State Line Road. In the second Arkansas, was engaged at Middleton and pushed, or was pushed back towards uh, Van Dorn's Corps, starting at Middleton and being pushed by the 5th Ohio Cavalry. Both the 5th Ohio and the 2nd Arkansas would find themselves on this field later in the day as well, fighting each other again. The Federals have the surprise. Van Dorn and Price have no idea up until early on the 5th that the Federals are here. Now this stretch right here where I'm standing is Metamora Hill. This is where the Federal Battery was. This was the hottest point according to one soldier that was here. This was the hottest artillery fighting of the war in his opinion. It's on a plaque right over there and I wish I could show it to you but those plaques are just so beat up that they're not worth putting in the video. That's why I can't wait to see what Shiloh does with this place. But it's hard to imagine, because Shiloh, speaking of which, was just a few months prior to this engagement. Ruggles' battery was there, and that was over 50 guns. I couldn't imagine a fraction of that battery being considered a more hot element than... Ruggles bad just to me it doesn't make sense so it must have been some hot fighting but according to him this was it this was this was the worst of the worst for artillery by the end of the day over 900 men would either be killed wounded or missing nothing compared to Corinth nothing compared to Shiloh but it still was 900 men whose life would be forever altered by this field in Tennessee by trying to cross that bridge, the bridge that no longer stands. But they tried to get across their bottleneck and they just couldn't do it. It was too hot a fighting for them. And well, when you're bottlenecked like that, you really don't have that many options. But either way, Van Dorn's men would go to fight on another day, as would Price's, so would Ord's, and so would Hurlbert's. They would continue on to different campaigns throughout the war. But a little piece of them would forever be left here on this battlefield. Like I said, it wasn't a major engagement, but it did matter to some. If you go down by the river today, and I'm not going to because we had a 
hard, harsh rain, and it's I know it's going to be marshy and flooded out and just really not able to get to it. But if you go down there today, there are three federal graves, two enlisted and one officer, I believe. He was a lieutenant from Illinois, and the other two were in the 5th Ohio Cavalry. Both of them were enlisted. And on top of that, there's a mass grave down there for Confederate soldiers who died here. It's unknown how many reside in that grave to this day or exactly where it is. But it doesn't change the fact that those men deserve to be honored. And that's what I'm here to do. And that's what you should all do as well. It doesn't take a whole lot to get out and just go visit the graves if you can. If you can't, that's what these videos are for. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you learned a little something. Uh, hopefully another video will be coming soon and I can show you down on the other end down by the river. But until then, thank you again. Have a blessed day and God bless Dixie.